स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग टूडे इज लेक्चर इज ऑल अबाउट कलर and these are the key concept that we will be talking about what is color and uh, uh, some aspects of colors so we all know what colors are but here we will be looking at uh, um, theories in a very general sort of way so tint what's a tint shade what's a color value saturated and unsaturated colors when did technicolor begin what are what is the symbolism implicit in color schemes do colors have a special temporal value okay how do filmmakers make use of colors in films how is color used as a device in the progression of the narrative we have been doing cinema is all about narrative and unless you consider andy warhol's films okay so we know what cinema is all about and it's basically a narrative okay it sh there should be a narrative and how filmmakers you make use of colors to tell a story hmm? i begin with a quote from by maxim gorky the renowned russian author the creator of mother hmm? and uh, he first saw, watched the movie the short film by lumiere brothers it could have been workers leaving the factory the lumiere factory we were talking about it the other day and he comments on the grayness of the cinematic world he says everything there the earth the trees the people the water and the air is dipped in monotonous gray gray rays of the sun across the gray sky gray eyes in gray faces and the leaves of the trees are ashen gray and that's how cinema was in its beginning or uh, at the time when it started to just develop initially there was no color everything was in shades of gray colors hold a powerful position among the elements of a story structure as we were just talking about narrative okay it's not like just introducing a splash of color to make someone look beautiful it's not like that okay colors do have a meaning uh, for example the british movie peeping tom is extremely important if you want to understand how colors are used Hmm? Peeping Tom. It's all about a filmmaker who is obsessed with the idea of uh, ca uh, capturing dying people on camera. Colors speak a universal language. Do you need any explanation here? Everyone understands what's blue, what's grey, what's black, and what's white. In most cultures, white signify mourning or peace, perhaps. peace uh black on the other hand morning morning also a formal occasion okay um red could mean several things in several cultures so colors speak a language uh colors contribute towards the aesthetics of a film i mean uh, watch savariya for instance and colors do have a say in the aesthetic determining the aesthetics of the film uh colors add to the mood colors often delineate characters why do we say that colors delineate characters a subdued character will wear subdued colors okay not bright fluorescent colors whereas someone who is shown uh, to be extremely bubbly uh yeah will always wear something more bright okay um generally in films when it's a sober girl she is usually dressed in shades of pastels yeah white of white uh, and lighter shades whereas uh, the more mischievous the more naughty girl would always be dressed in bright shades especially bright shades of pink okay so colors delineate characters you are supposed to understand that we are being told something uh key theoreticians of uh, colors are 
we were talking about realism and Rudolf Arnheim the other day. Um, David Bordwell and Kristen Thompson, Sergei Einstein and Derek Harmon, who is also a filmmaker, Edward the Second, British filmmaker. Hmm? So, Rudolf Arnheim has a, written an essay 1935. It is called Remark on Color Film and he uh, tells you about his experience with watching a color film for the first time and says people of taste have considered the colors in color film atrocious when colors first begin to make their presence felt that this is atrocious. Many have thought them unnatural. So, what he is trying to actually question is our colors realistic? Do colors contribute in any way towards lending a touch of realism to cinema? Okay, so, there is a question of realism and when filmmakers want to give that touch of surrealism, then we know what colors they use. Okay, so, we are going to discuss that also. So, colors do have a relationship with the concept of realism. Uh, this movie, let us think of the Wizard of Oz. We are not in Kansas anymore. So, Kansas is in shades of monochromatic shades of grey and sepia tone, whereas the moment Dorothy is out of Kansas state, her world turns into yeah, a colourful world, a fantasy world. Okay, so, colours signify fantasy as an escape. Invention of Technicolor in the 1930s. So, this is the background of color. Dr. Herbert and Natalie Claus invented something called the three strip, strip Technicolor and gave us shades of yellow, orange and blue. And this was an expensive process. Technicolor, I mean, if you look at some of the old movie posters, you will find a small byline there, color by Technicolor. Okay. And you would often wonder, what does it mean, color by Technicolor? That means that Technicolor was a patent and this, these were the primary colors they used, they employed. It was a very expensive process and soon gave way to the more affordable Eastman color. Does anyone know the difference between Technicolor and Eastman color? What happens to films when they are shot in Technicolor or and when they are shot in Eastman color? Yeah. Um, technicolor, it, uh, Eastman color is shot in color, mm -hmm. whereas Technicolor is a later post production technique. Okay. All right. Um, I would rather stick to the economics of it at this point. As we have been already told, Technicolor was an expensive process, but it was more lasting process. So, films shot in Technicolor are still around, whereas films shot in Eastman color had to be retouched and redone <coughs> at some stage. Martin Scorsese, great film director, he has often funded projects where uh, colors are restored. We often hear films are being restored. How? What is being done to them? It is the color that we talk about. Okay. So, from Technicolor to Eastman color, the transition was to make the process of cinema uh, filmmaking cheaper, but uh, was it really so? Because uh, we could feel that many films got destroyed in the process. They did not have the, that sense of longevity. So, therefore, the trouble. The first feature film in Technicolor was Becky Sharp, a revisiting of which movie, which novel? Becky Sharp is a memorable character from Literature Students, Thackeray's Vanity Fair. Yeah, Becky Sharp is a character. Technicolor was a smoother and uh, um, more subtle shade of Eastman color. Hmm? 
and uh, we are often as we were just talking about that Eastman colors fade away very quickly and uh, they in the long run they lose the relationship with each other. So, therefore, the need to restore films shot in Eastman color. Any questions, any comments here? Okay. So, terms some basic concepts related to colors, value, color value is proportion of light or dark in color. Basically, we when we talk about white and dark, uh, black and white films. Okay. So, tint, tint is a lighter shade, suppose you have gray as a standard shade and then the lighter shade becomes. So, we, when we want it to be of a lighter shade, we call it a tint. But if you want it to be of darker shade, then it is a shade. Shade is darker than the normal value. Other two terms that you should be familiar with are saturated and desaturated. Desaturated are more muted, bleached out colors. Saturated colors are unadulterated and strong. And when filmmakers want to project a surrealist tendency on screen, they resort to using saturated colors. We are going to see examples soon. Saturated red, redder than red, American beauty. Hmm? And there, is there a symbolic value here? Passion, love, Passion, love betrayal, murder many emotions. Okay. A state of mind, literature students if, uh, should be familiar with the concept of expressionism, unnatural colors. Okay. So, likewise you should perhaps you can take down the term expressionism and look it up, how colors and color scheme was an important part of expressionism and from which we get the concept of saturated colors. So, saturated green and saturated red and saturated green. Um, I would advise you to take a look at some particular scenes from natural born killers, Oliver Stones, where green signifies many things to many people. To some it may suggest fertility, health, at the same time it could also mean catastrophe, envy, poison, pus even. Hmm? Old boy is in shades of green and blues. Right? Watch a old boy, we will be talking about that film quite frequently in this course. So, effects of color, what do, what does color do to us? So, when objects need attention, filmmakers resort to using three dimensions of color to substantiate my point, I would like you to uh, visit a movie called Insomnia, Christopher Nolan's, Al Pacino and Robin Williams. Please watch the uh, scene where uh, Al Pacino is uh, on a trail of this killer. He never finds, but uh, by mistake he shoots or by mistake or by intent, he shoots his partner dead. Okay. And look at the shades and various dimensions of shade. There are various objects all in shades of grey, the misty fog, okay, the snow and the rocks and the pebbles and the, so grey acts to add a kind of dimension to the objects around. In the same scene you also feel the temperature, okay, you cannot have the tactile sense while watching a movie, but uh, there are some certain scenes which try to evoke. Hmm? Our sense of odor is evoked in a movie like perfume, where a perfume is a very difficult movie to translate on screen. If you have read perfume, Peter Suskind's novel, okay, it is all about someone who deals, specializes in creating different smells and scents, okay. but it is very difficult to project that on screen. You can write novel about it, but not, yeah, but how to. So, the film succeeds on some levels and fails on some other levels, but that is a different story. So, temperature, evoking temperature through color, sunshine, snow, fog, etcetera. 
Okay. Colors lend a touch of poignancy. For example, think Schindler's List, Steve, uh, Steven Spielberg's. There is a tinge of red. Yeah. And when does that red happen? A small girl. Yeah. Passes him by. And then the same girl later we realize is killed during uh, the Holocaust period. Okay, so, uh, red means something to the protagonist. The entire scene is in black and white, the film is in black and, wh black and white, but the girl, the little girl and the hero has just a fleeting glimpse of that little girl in red coat. It is a beautiful scene, very poignant, so to evo evoke a sense of poignancy. Atmosphere, old boy, we were just talking about stark shades of um, blue, green, perhaps red. Okay. So, creating an atmosphere, there are no light tones, except at the end, when he erases his memory. Remember? Colors are also used to create symbol, uh, symbolism. For example, in a film like Edward Scissorhands, how many of you are familiar with that? You smile, that means it means something to you. Heard, Heard of it? Johnny Depp's Edward Scissorhands, how many of you have watched the movie? Okay. Edward Scissorhands, please watch it. Okay. Make it a point to watch most of these uh, Tim Burton, Johnny Depp collaborations and you will find some, something new, some new technique, some new device taking place. This is one of the earliest examples of their uh, collaboration. And what does Johnny Depp play in the movie? He is a? He is a robot. Okay, created by a crazy isolated scientist in an isolated tower, almost like a fairy tale. Hmm? Once upon a time, the movie begins that way. There was a place like this. Okay, so, he, the, the robot was const, uh, created by a scientist in a castle and one day, um, and uh, this, this kid, this uh, um, beautiful robot as played by Johnny Depp is very lovingly constructed or created by his maker, it's, you know like uh, turning the Frankenstein legend on its head. This is a very innocent, very pretty monster. <laughs> but what happens tragically that uh, as uh, the scientist is giving finishing touches to this robot, he has a heart attack and he dies. So, he cannot give proper skin to the robot and proper hands, because there are scissors, scissors for his hands originally and that remains, because the scientist could not complete the job and he dies before doing that. So, you are left with this robot who has been given the right heart but not the right body. Hmm? So, uh, the story after that, uh, several things happen and the robo is brought into the real world from his, re from his world of, the, of castles and very gothic world, very unreal world. He is brought down to uh, a more real suburban, suburban world. And then, what colors do we see? All the houses are practically uniform painted in shades of primary colors, red, yellow, green, almost like uh, you, you know candies, excessively bright and it gives you an impression that something is wrong with this world. Things cannot be this bright, this cheerful, this sunny. Okay, so, that is what the uh, filmmaker is trying to alert us to, that suburban life, the, the a life which is too conformist cannot be all that normal. And here, this world is contrasted with the world of our robot, who is always dressed in shades of, always dressed in the same uh, costume that is black leather, okay, giving him that rock star, punk star kind of a feel. And also, someone who is absolutely out of place, a misfit in this suburban, idealized suburban world. So, it is a beautiful movie, do watch it. Three Kings, Mark Wahlberg, George Clooney, David O. Russell is the director and watch the film 
for the way it is shot. It is all about the Gulf War, okay. but you look at um, how he uses documentary footage, he uses jump cuts, we have been talking about those elements, quick cuts, jump cuts and bleached out color scheme. The kind of scheme we just watched and just we were discussing um, in relation to traffic by Steven Soderbergh. Colors are sometimes used to create a painterly effect. Kurosawa's dreams, Kurosawa was a master painter, Satyajit Ray was a master painter. Okay. So, some of their sets appear as if these are paintings. M. F. Hussain's films, if you watch Meenakshi for instance, you did watch Meenakshi. Okay. Watch Meenakshi and you will feel, your, you know, it is a it is a lineup of great paintings there. Um, Mulholland Drive, two girls and look at the stark difference in colors. Let us talk about it. How do colors? We were just talking about colors, delineate characters. What is happening here? Red red lipstick okay <laughs> fine okay dark eyebrows dark hair blonde hair okay two girls one has blonde hair lighter shade of makeup lighter clothes and string pearls yes and the other girl red and black stark colors dark hair bright lipstick bright makeup so, visual effect is created to delineate characters. You can think of any number of examples. Mulholland Drive is by David Lynch and another movie by David Lynch is the blue velvet. blue velvet. Yeah. Again it uh, begins very deceptively with shades of bright cheerful colors. Why? Again, American suburbs, the suburban so called the so called suburban utopia subverted in so many films including a very recent one by um, uh, Sam Mendes, Revolutionary Road, Kate Winslet and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. So, how Suburban is not what it appears or what it claims to be. It is not an not a utopian idealized haven. The reality is something else and that is what David Lynch tries to tell you. So, blue velvet begins with bright cheerful sunny uh, shades and tones of colors, but then it is starts uh, gradually it begins to get darker because the theme itself is so dark. Watch it for Dennis Hopper and Isabel Rosellini. Uh, colors helping as a narrative device. Zhang Yumu's which film? Chinese film, Heroes. Tony Lang, Maggie Chang, Jet Li and several major Chinese film stars. It was uh, um, released uh, worldwide by Quentin Tarantino in 2002, because he was so totally blown away by the aesthetics of the film. So, Heroes uses a tripartite color scheme. Again, it is a story told from multiple perspectives. We have been talking about the concept of multiple perspectives when we were discussing narratives. Remember? So, Kurosawa's which movie? Rashomon okay? and Zhang Yimou's um, hero. I, another important story, this is just a digression uh, film of uh, telling multiple or uh, showing multiple perspectives while telling a narrative is Vantage Point. Watch Vantage Point. It is another remarkable film, especially for its storytelling.
same event is repeated several times. Repetition is a very key concept in narratives, you should know that. Okay, so, heroes employ red and gold color scheme for some portions, then blue, then white and pale green dominate. And colors are not just used here indiscriminately, they denote something more. What is it? Time, passage of time, temporality. Okay, so, we were just talking about spatial temporal effects of colors. So, in heroes, colors are used to suggest time, passage of time. So, this story was told at a different point, okay. it was another period and then something else and then. So, therefore, the color scheme follows the temporal scheme. So, shades of pale green and blue and white and interestingly the film ends in white and uh, I quote uh, Sergei Einstein here, who in his selected works, he says, different countries have different notions of color, white is a color of mourning for the Chinese. So, it is not always symbolic of peace as it would be in many other cultures, but here in Chinese culture it is a color of mourning and why, why does heroes end on a shade of white? Because most of the protagonists die while fighting for the kingdom. We have been talking about traffic 2000 and here colors are not employed to suggest temporal difference, but spatial difference. So, colors mark different narrative strengths indicate special differences. Benicio del Toro's story is set in grainy washed out yellow, bleached out yellow of Mexico. However, traffic basically deals with what? Drugs, drug trafficking and how drugs as a uh, influences families or um, businesses or politics even. For the Michael Douglas story and Michael Douglas and his uh, family, Steven Soderbergh used a blue palette, steel gray blue. And for Catherine Zeta Jones and Dennis Quaid Strand, we get a sun drenched full color set in San Diego. Uh, we were talking about surrealism. So, what is surrealism? Let us talk about the other day we, while discussing realism, we talked about magic realism. Surrealism. So, what is surrealism? Okay, a subconscious state of mind. Okay, a dreamlike state of mind. Who was the master surrealist? Most well known, Salvador Dali. Dali collaborated with Bunel in Ashia and Dalo, the movie which we the still uh, we were discussing the other day, a hand splicing an eyeball. Okay. So, Salvador Dali actually collaborated on that film in creating these very uh, um, gloomy, blurry and dream like state uh, images. Taxi driver. Okay. When Robert De Niro is on a killing rampage, when he shoots uh, every possible villain and pimp in a brothel, where uh, Judy Foster is kept. By the end, he is so pleased with himself, he has these delusions about himself as a, 
at this kind, uh, a kind of a, a, a one-man army, a hero. Whereas Martin Scorsese is quite uh, ambiguous about his state. Okay, it's about his position. He is not really a hero for Scorsese. He is just a deranged, highly disturbed man. Okay, but in his mind, he is a hero. <coughs> And then you have these shades of very saturated uh, red trickling down the wall, trickling down Travis Brickle's own head and uh, uh, all over the place, pools of red, very saturated, not really a very realistic red, but saturated red. Filmmakers also make use, this is another symbol to lend very, uh, again we are talking about delineation of characters, how colors delineate characters. So, you have Jim Carrey playing the Riddler in Batman Forever, thank you. And of course, you have uh, Heath Ledger doing his Joker in shades of purple, green and other. So, colors are important, colors tell us about the character. Colors may also evoke nostalgia. And when nostalgia is evoked, we do not have saturated colors. Okay. We have soft muted colors in soft muted glow. So, one good example is Cinema Paradiso, a wonderful Italian film. So, everything is tinted with fond memories for the uh, protagonist. Can you think of more nostalgic films? Think nostalgia and you will always have soft muted colors. Which is that? Malena. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, and there is a Jim Carrey movie, I do not know how many of you are aware of that, early 2000, it is called The Majestic. It is all about a movie theatre, which he tries to restore for uh, someone who mistakes him for his son, for his lost son. And it is also, it is a beautiful movie, shot in very soft and muted colours. We often talk about black and white films. So, black and white uh, I do not know how many of you still watch black and white films, but there are occasional black and white films, which are, which you know, uh, which get released once in a while and people talk about it. So, very notable examples, Woody Allen's Manhattan, 1979, Scorsese after taxi driver and saturated colors resorted to raging bull which won Robert De Niro his first Academy Award. No, sorry, second. First was for Godfather uh, part two. Okay. Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, Tim Burton's Ed Wood, which is a biopic of uh, a failed filmmaker. Yeah. It is a very interesting movie, watch it. Um, Jim Jarmusch, again, is an expert, is very fond of making uh, black and white movies. He is an indie filmmaker, Dead Man with Johnny Depp and he has also made an anthology, a very famous anthology, Jim Jarmusch, which is it? Good, Coffee and Cigarettes. It has beautiful segments. Particularly with uh, um, Alfred Melino and uh, um, Kate Blanchett. George Clooney's drama Good Night and Good Luck is based on the McCarthy period and you know the communist witch hunting, so called, is upset in, uh, set during the McCarthy period, early 50s, late 40s and was released in 2005, a beautiful example of black and white movie. 
Sin City of course, is based on a graphic novel and it is very faithful to the novel and most recent, recent successful example the artist 2011. Would you like to add to this list? Graphic novel, yeah. So, graphic novel is stay to uh, true to their uh, concept. So, therefore, black and white. What effect? Can you just take any movie and uh, forget uh, the films which are based on graphic novels, but why do you think um, we need to have raging bull in black and white? Too much blood, but then there was too much blood in taxi driver also. Exactly. So, in taxi driver, the violence is psychological, in raging bull, it is very physical and Scorsese wanted to avoid all that blood flying around, because instead of showing red blood, it is better to show blood in stark shades or muted shades of grey and therefore, resorting to black and white. However, there is a particular segment in Raging Bull also, which is in color. Do you remember which? No, not towards the end. There is a time when um, Jake LaMotta. Mm, well, yeah, that is uh, just a, a glimpse, a very minor uh, scheme, good. But I am talking about a home video that Jake LaMotta shoots with his family. Would you like to drink water? Yeah. So, uh, there, there is a home video that he shoots with his family and that is the only time Scorsese allows us to watch some color on screen. Again, that is very nostalgic for Jake Lemota who has lost everything, his money, his fame, his family, his love, all his uh, loved ones have left him. So, the only color in his life was his, fa was his family, which uh, he loses as well. So, therefore, the use of color, it makes sense, it is symbolic. Uh, Clooney's movie on the other hand is a period film and perhaps uh, we are, he wanted to give a more realistic touch and therefore, you know after all it is talking about those times when television was in black and white. Ed Morrow is the key protagonist there and Ed Morrow was known for his show Good Night and Good Luck, which was a black and white show. So, therefore, the necessity to show that. So, um, most scholars of color theory believe that uh, black and white, even in times of color, is used to make films more elegant, elegant and often more dramatic. Directors and cinematographers are often freed from the reality of color. Color bound binds people, constrains them. And certain kind of theme call for black and white. For example, when you have to portray psychological or moral conflict on screen, as in Schindler's List, when the setting is more naturalistic not real, but naturalistic as in Manhattan. And then of course, you are talking about uh, a dark graphic novel such as Sin City, which has occasional flashes of yellow, am I right? Yeah. Red and yellow. Yeah. Any comments you would like to make about color theory? color, any observation? It is actually a slightly obscure uh, Toby Maguire movie called mm -hmm. Pleasant Will. Pleasant Will, yes. So, what happens in that is they watch this old uh, TV show which is in black and white and somehow through some device which is not really explained, they end up in that TV show. So, they end up being black and white themselves mm -hmm. and how they get used to that and how towards the end of the movie the entire, the place where they are Pleasant Will turns into color as well. So, there Color plays a role in the story itself, in the plot itself. Color, use of color as a narrative, yes, that is a very good example. 
pleasant will. Hmm? Okay, how many of you are familiar with Three Kings? Three Kings is actually a very interesting film. If you watch it, you will understand that how the horrors of war are muted as he uses, as David O. Russell resorts to use those bleached out muted colors. So, colors do add to the narrative towards telling a story. Okay. Uh, Looper is a very recent movie. Yeah, yeah listen the, to this. The main character is a drug addict. He takes drugs in the form of eye drops. Mm -hmm. So, the first time he takes it, everything on screen becomes brighter. Mm -hmm. So, his state of mind. State of mind. Good. I am glad you are thinking along those lines. <laughs> okay. So, the moment he starts taking drugs, everything is sunny and bright. That is a state of mind. Surrealism. Yeah, you are talking about. Now, let us discuss a film like The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. Batman Begins was often in shades of Batman Begins. Brown, brown, brown muted brown. oranges and yellows, yeah, earthy browns. Yeah, but as uh, uh, the sequels progressed, the films got more and more darker. Did you notice that? The Dark Knight Rises is also remarkable because this is the very first time that you see Batman during daytime. You never have, you never have daytime in Gotham City. That is what the earlier versions have told us. You watch um, the Tim Burton version of Batman with Michael Keaton. Okay. And then we also had a version with Val Kilmer, which is a fairly decent one with uh, Nicole Kidman, Batman Forever. Okay. So, so you, you never have daytime on screen in the Batman saga. The Dark Knight is the first movie to use daytime on screen in the Batman narrative. But that is not to say that the theme is not dark. It is the Dark Knight as you, you know uh, the film progresses, it gets darker and darker and it ends on a very pessimistic, very nihilistic note if you remember, where uh, there is a need for hero, but uh, um, such are the conditions that you cannot call the real hero, hero. Okay. You need to create a false hero to, um, you, you know to keep that ray of hope alive in the people. And it ends on a very dark note and on very dark colors. If you know, watch the movie, you will understand. Okay. The last part of this, you know, that this is the final, that is what uh, Christopher Nolan tells us, no more Batman, okay, which is sad for the fans, but anyway, cannot be added anything more to it. So, how does that movie end? I mean, it starts with Batman closeted, he is beaten up. He is uh, almost like you know a badly in need of help. You see him as he walks, walking with the help of a walking stick, okay. all beaten uh, psychologically, physically, morally. Okay. He does not want to show his face to the world. Even Bruce Wayne, it is not just a Batman, but Bruce Wayne okay. and you, he is not the same old flamboyant Bruce Wayne anymore. It's very much like Citizen Kane as well, because he's, in, he's alone in the house and yeah. the way they talk about him as well, nobody has seen him in a while and it, especially the way the manner is shown, it's almost a bit like Citizen Kane, how they show Xanadu as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a huge castle, uh, choking with uh, bric a bricks and beautiful things which are assembled in that castle. So, that is the, you know, similarity he is drawing, that is the parallel he draws between Citizen Kane's Xanadu and Bruce Wayne's castle. Hmm? But how does the movie end? The Dark Knight Rises, on a dark note or on a positive yes, because uh, finally he has found peace, the Batman is dead, but still uh, uh, Bruce Wayne lives on. Okay? And what is the color scheme there? It is bright. It is set in Italy, okay. where Alfred's character, 
Michael Caine goes to Italy and he it is an unspoken bond between them, some kind of a deal between them that they would not show any recognition, they would not exhibit any recognition of each other, but they do acknowledge each other while sitting at two different tables at different corners of the open restaurant. It is not a closeted dark restaurant, but it is very um, you know open air kind of a place. And uh, Batman is with his lady, a cat woman okay, and it is bright, sunny and glowing. And both dressed up very differently the way they used to dress earlier. So, what do colors signify here? A change, a transition also, happy ending. So, it was good to see a Batman series ending that way on a note of hope. Anything else that you can think of? In times of in Hindi movies. Why does Hindi? Why not talk about Indian cinema? Culturally, the color stands for so much more, like everything has some significance, so you say that it is more difficult to do color, I mean non color. Okay, but let us assume we want to make a movie based on our silent cinema period, mm -hmm. 1930s or early 40s and would not it be more wiser, more prudent to use a black and white color scheme and they can use, some smart filmmaker can use but usually we like to play it safe. Yeah, was remade, like such a classic black and white uh, film. And did you like it? Was remade in, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, I think it was 2005. Color, watch the, watch the film in color. Yeah, I, I remember the billboards screaming at us. Yeah, but did you watch the movie and did you like the colors? You preferred it in black and white because of its simplicity and elegance. I think it made much more sense when it was in black and white. I do not know, maybe they wanted to reach out to the younger generation and um, uh, that is something most of us have noticed that uh, when it is a black and white movie, people do not like, especially in our country. So, they are bang on. Okay. Uh, culturally, we do have, you know as a nation, we do have prejudices towards black and white cinema, especially in times of color. Why use color, why you, uh, use black and white scheme at all, when color is so easily available. So, we are used to find watching color on screen, but I do not think that uh, internationally this um, practice prevails, because uh, uh, to my knowledge, I have never seen a black and white class, citizen cane goes color, <laughs> okay, imagine. We do not want to watch Citizen Kane in color, right? It makes perfect sense in its original avatar, no need to mess up with, mess around with it. So, that is a uh, matter of personal taste, but I do feel that classics once they are made, they should be restored, okay, but not, uh, and there is no need to add colors to it, because that is the way they were intended to be. All right, any comments, observations? Color trilogy, that is very important. Uh, Polish filmmaker Kozlowski, yeah. So, blue, blue, red, and white. Okay. We will be discussing the film because that is also there is a thread running through the film, the, th the trilogy. There is a theme there. We will be discussing the film soon if we have the time. A short film about killing. Hmm. The movie progresses, all the shades, uh, it becomes more and more, the frame becomes more and more covered with uh, shades and black. You know what? European cinema is much more experimental with their color palette, okay, and with their uh, innovative uses of color on screen. That is something about, the, there is a movie called the Red Balloon, okay, and it is a very, very uh, symbolic, very suggestive movie. Full of a uh, very deep kind of images. So, colors do play a very important role. It is not like they just have a red balloon there. It stands for something. 
Okay, so, European cinema has some kind of an ideology, some kind of a method behind using a particular color scheme. Colors in a narrative are meant to aid the verbal communication in the sense that certain shades of feelings and emotions are incommunicable in words, hence the employment of colors. Further, colors also elicit certain emotions or reactions in the human and also in animals. Think showing a red drag to a bull. So, this acts as a psychic stimulant, therefore, the significance of colors. Okay, all right. So, thank you very much and we meet tomorrow.